All right, everybody, I'm back with another video. You all know that I've been bitching and complaining about this oil fill and how ETS ran the charge pipe right over it. And I told you I refused to buy a Killer B pickup, but that seemed like my only option. But had a breakthrough today. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. So as you know, I have the Hawkeye. I've worked on bug eyes and blob eyes. Um, my ETS kit on this one, when I had it on, had no issues whatsoever about going over the fill plug. I never had a problem with it. But I decided to go ahead and pull an oil fill plug from another Subaru. And what I found out is it's a direct swap. And it solves the problem. And you can pick it up for from Subaru for, I think, about 30, 40 bucks maybe at the most. Um, but... I'll show you real quick. I already have it unbolted because I was messing with it today. Um, so let's go ahead and pop off this one, which is three 10 millimeter bolts down on the bottom. So you got your bracket and the two holding it in. So this is basically from 2008, I believe, up was this style because they have the air injection pump here. So they can't run the fill plug out this direction, but they're, the older Subarus did run it out here. So. I'm going to show you this here. This is an oil fill plug from, I believe, they used it on a lot of different models, but let's just keep it simple, 2002 to 2007 WRX and STIs. Um, Pre-air injection pump right here in the front. So I had this laying around from the Hawkeye, and I think this might actually solve my issue. So let me go ahead and uh, toss this in. And if we route it in here, it goes right back in, bolts in place. Put the camera down for a second and let's see. All right, so you can see here. So there's a factory bracket for the 02 to 7. I don't have the bracket on there, but you can bolt it right there and it'll hold it to give it a little more support for this. Those holes lined up the um, fill tube same size o-ring and everything so it lines up it locks in place and there you go no more issues plenty of room for you to go ahead and fill your oil obviously this does require you to have the air pump deleted um, I highly doubt it would fit with the air pump there if you want to just use as reference uh, we can use the space here of where it sits in relation to the timing cover here. And if you come over to this one with my air pump, it would actually be right in here. So air pump has to be deleted in order for that to work. But I enjoy that repair because uh, a little upgrade, man, for a really cheap. I'm not having to buy a $200 oil fill plug and keep it OEM. If you ever need to replace it, there's no custom tubing, no nothing. Bolts right in place. It's factory fill. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the look of it. So sits, it sits in a pretty good spot. I can now use my Subaru fill that I have that screws onto the, screws onto the um, oil fill cap. And I can do my oil changes because it really was a pain in the ass to do an oil change with the... Uh, ETS pipe right there so uh, yeah I just wanted to throw that little bit of information out there I think I'm gonna do a really short video right now just to let everyone in on the oil fill um, I've never seen anything on the forums or anything I'm sure somebody's done it if not great whatever um, but this is definitely a good thing for 2015 plus um, STIs uh, but this is a quick fix um, really cheap and I'm sure you can find those fill plugs for a 2002 to 7 uh, WRX is almost anywhere and that'll take care of that problem fills in the gap actually right here makes it look fairly decent like it's supposed to be like that um, but yeah solves my problem of hitting the oil fill cap on the ETS so came out pretty good I'm happy with that I'm going to bolt that in. I am going to buy that little bracket because I'm a stickler for keeping all the OEM brackets and everything on it. Um, but yeah, um, this is actually from 
from the Hawkeye. So, uh, yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and order that from Subaru with the bracket and everything all assembled. And I'll go ahead and be tossing it on here. And that'll be a little upgrade there so I don't have to worry about my oil changes. As you saw in my last video, I did the series system um, where I routed the fuel pressure through here around to this rail back around. Um, as I don't know if anybody noticed, but I never had fuel pulse dampeners on this system. Um, that's obviously a big thing for Subarus. You know I was fighting a pulsation, but that was coming from the pump. Um, ever, switched, ever since switching that AM340 out, we went to Walbro 450. Uh, that took care of a lot of the issues that I was having. But as you notice, when I went to Texas 2K, I ended up doing a quick makeshift parallel system. Uh, car drove fine, drove very well. I had it tuned, I had it dialed in perfectly. When I switched to the series, I'm getting a lot of drivability issues. And when looking at the logs, they are definitely pulsations in the fuel rail setup. Um, I'll be same load, same RPM, same everything, just cruising at a consistent speed. And I'll get fuel trim swings from plus 20 to minus 20 uh, with no change in any kind of load or anything like that. Um, and like I said, there is no dampeners on this system at all. Uh, so that was always one thing that I was worried about because Subarus are known for that. I have radium fuel rail pulse dampeners, um, but I never put them in this car. I just figured we'll send it with the way it was. And now that I'm having issues, I really don't want to switch back to the parallel system. I want to stick with this series because it's just simpler for me and less fuel lines in the uh, engine bay. So I'm gonna go ahead and end up tossing in the dampers. Uh, I was working on the rails and whatnot. And so I just had them set up on these TGVs here. So that's what I'm gonna be running. Got the damper set up on each rail. Um, that's one there. And the second rail is here. I'm gonna go ahead and run two. I know some people say you only need to run one if it's in a series system. I'd rather just play it safe and do a setup. It just seems like it'd be a lot smarter to run one on each rail. But uh, like I said, with the fuel system, we still got some pulsations. I got the dampers. I'm gonna put them in. Uh, that'll probably be next video because got a lot of stuff going on. So uh, we're just trying to keep everyone up to date on what's going on with the car car still here and actually I am probably going to end up changing the charge pipe here and dumping the factory bypass valve um, and just going with an actual vent to atmosphere blow off valve probably should have bought it when I got the whole setup but you know you live and you learn uh, ETS sells just this pipe here um, about 220 I believe um, and I actually have a turbo smart vent to atmosphere race port 50 millimeter I think we're going to dump on this thing and uh, that should help help with the uh, 30 pounds of boost that we're running on it. So, yeah, um, that's a quick update of everything going on. So, like I said, it's going to be a short one, but I am going to be dumping in the dampers on the rails. And hopefully this series system will smooth out where I can at least run with it and not have to change back to parallel because if it does not want to function correctly. I know on parallel it was working fine with no dampers. So I would assume with parallel and the, I'll leave the dampers in there. That should be the best case scenario. Uh, so until then, I think that's going to be a wrap for tonight. But uh, yep, it's always something. It's always something with these cars. And uh, seems like if you want another 50 horsepower, you're going to turn into a bunch more problems. But uh, We'll get there. I got nothing but time. So this is just my project and I love messing with it. And I'm learning a lot about the different fuel systems and how they're acting on this car and the uh, iWire kit. Um, I know there was a comment. 
uh, about how I did my iWire kit. So I have the iWire kit, as you can see right here. Um, I have it wired up. I did change a couple things on the iWire kit because I didn't really like the way that they um, ran the wire all the way up to the front fuse box to do the add a fuse. I'm, I can't stand add a fuses, so I ended up doing it a different route, which is much cleaner, much simpler. I don't know why they did it. If someone knows or if they're curious on how I did the Y wire kit and what I changed, drop it down in the comments. Let me know. Uh, I'll definitely, I can go through it and show you exactly how I ran everything and what I modified in order to get it um, to work the way it is. It's on a single pump still. It's a wall row 450 hardwired. But uh, yeah, if you guys want me to make a video, I can definitely do that about the I wire kit and what I modified. Um, also, I do want to make a video about my gauges and how I have them wired up and pass through the rear O2 sensor. I made my own pigtail um, and I don't know how everyone else hooks it up. I know iWire makes a style of kit. Um, I did take some notes from them, but I ended up changing it completely and I wired up my own. It's very plug and play. You don't have to tap into anything. It plugs into the factory rear O2 sensor runs my wires up into the cab that everything powers feeds the gauges everything um and that's why i ended up having it hooked up so if anyone's curious about that um let me know and i can make a video i have an extra connector and everything that i'm going to make that i was going to make for this black hatch to do the same exact thing but this was my test car so i made the kit i did it i installed it a long time ago and as you know i data logged the wide band through the through the ECU so this all plugs in play and it comes back and forth and sends all the wiring one simple harness and plugs in and no no uh, you know cutting wires or plugging in random stuff up here um, I don't like a lot of connectors everywhere so it's kind of just makes it easier for me to just plug in one wire and have it come up and go straight into the cab and that one wire does the power sends the, uh, the signal one's power powers the gauges i actually have it powering both gauges um, the gauges are grounded up here in the chassis ground um, the second wire is output from the gauge back into the ecu which runs through that rear o2 sensor all three wires and one connector just plug it in runs back into the ecu which then i could data log so it keeps everything nice and clean i don't have a bunch of wires ran back and forth and just random stuff hanging out uh, i really like the way it came out if anyone wants to see how I did that, let me know. Uh, I could do a video on that because I think that's a really, really cool option. Uh, obviously, um, open source, you're gonna need for deleting the light and everything else, but uh, it's a good option to have in there. I mean, technically you can do it on anything else, but you're gonna have a check engine light unless you have a way to fix that issue of not having a rear O2 sensor. But definitely a great option. Um, Having that wide band through the ECU on the rear port and the fuel pressure gauge um, through the TGV, that's super awesome. Um, I made my own harnesses on a lot of that stuff, so um, you can find them online, but if you ever want to see or want in more depth uh, of how it works, let me know. And I don't mind uh, taping, taking a little extra time to explain any of the situations that I have in here because, uh, like I said, I just do my modifications and I do them for me, and if anyone else wants to know, great, but uh, it keeps it simple, it keeps it exactly how I want it, and um, I really enjoy having my car exactly how I want my car, and I want all my gauges exactly how I want my gauges, keep it plug and play, I'm not modifying anything that I can't reverse, I'm not a fan into cutting the frame, cutting anything up, hacking anything up, uh, I try to keep it as OEM as possible and removable, so, um, yeah, this is uh, this is it. I know I was just rambling for a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to touch on that oil fill. Definitely something people should look into. Um, it's really cool. I'm glad that worked out. Saves me a couple hundred dollars to not buy a Killer B one. Um, but yeah, and it still looks good to me. So I'm okay with the plastic housing. You want to change the oil cap, you can still change it, whatever color or brand. Um, but yeah, that, uh, came out really good. So, all right. Well, till next time.
I'll see you uh, on the next video, man.